everybody! Oh, there you go. Don't stop me now, cause I'm having a good time. I'm seeing that to Satan next time he tries to tempt you. Tell me how it goes in the comments. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to episode two of Eggs with Meg. How's my baby, baby Dawson? <laughs> Isn't he the cutest little chap? I'll hold him up a little bit. Can you say hi? Can you say hi, YouTube? <laughs> yes, I know. He is so squishy and edible, and I can't believe I made him from scratch. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where to even begin? First of all, I just want to start by saying thank you so much for all your love and your support and just the endless messages and kindness and encouragement I received. It means more than you know, and I'm so thankful. I could not do this without people that actually wanted to hear what we had to share. So very thankful and just very humbled and just so happy to have you here with me and here along this fun little journey we're on. <laughs> so today I really wanted to talk about how storms from above can be signs of love. That's kind of a cheesy entitlement of this video, but I want to go more into depth about that. First of all, can we just talk about how crazy these windstorms have been in Utah? If you're not from Utah, let me fill you in. There was a huge cold front that came in, really high speed winds. It was really scary. Everybody was like, ah! there were trees all over the place. It was just a crazy storm that personally I was not prepared for. We had just gotten back from St. George. It was sunny and warm and nice. And then we came home and I was like, why is Utah so freezing? <laughs> So this crazy windstorm had me thinking and one of my favorite scriptures came to mind that I wanted to share with you guys. There is a reason that the Book of Mormon was written on gold plates because it is gold. <laughs> I know that was cheesy, but it is pure gold given to us from a loving Heavenly Father who wants us to understand His ways and His works. So this scripture is in Ether 6.5. And it says, and it came to pass that the Lord God caused that there should be a furious wind blown about upon the face of the waters towards the promised land. And thus they were tossed upon the waves of the sea before the wind. So let's break it down. First of all, it's saying that the Lord caused this storm to happen, but it said that the winds were blowing them towards the promised land. Now, how profound is that? That Heavenly Father may send us storms because he knows the direction the storm is gonna take us. Maybe we need to get somewhere quicker. Maybe our promised land, so to speak, is a job opportunity or somebody we're supposed to meet in this life or an opportunity that he has been planning for a long time that maybe we didn't even know was in our future. I mean, we just never know know what Heavenly Father's pure intentions are and I can promise you they are always pure and they were always for our potential and for our progress and I actually have so many experiences in my life where I can say this crazy tumultuous storm was surrounding my life but if I look back it was the very thing that brought me to where I needed to be it put me on that path one of the reasons that I love this scripture is because it tells us that sometimes Heavenly Father sends these storms in our life. He sends these winds because he knows where they will take us. He knows where they'll carry us and where they're going to lead us. And that's huge because if you're ever in the midst of one of these storms that's uncertain and you don't know what's going to happen, you can know for a certainty that Heavenly Father does and that he has planned this out for you and that he knows you and understands you perfectly. I just realized I'm not wearing my wedding ring. Ooh. Okay, my hands get really swollen sometimes and rings are just not my cup of tea. And I promise I'm married. I'll bring my husband in later <laughs> so you can meet him. But yeah, I just realized I don't have my ring on. No ring. No ring on it. Oh, 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 oh. oh let's drop my scriptures. One of my favorite stories about Jesus Christ in the Bible is when he's in this ship with his disciples and one of the disciples says master carest thou not that we perish like do you even see what's going on here are you going to save us are you just going to wait what's the plan like what's going to happen but i think something that's very overlooked in that story is the fact that jesus christ was in the boat with them he's in our boat with us he's in the boat he's there he's riding through the storm with us and he's not going to leave us and forsake us maybe he's not going to calm the storm but he's going to calm the people that are experiencing in the storm he's gonna soothe us and our souls and sometimes that's more miraculous than just making the storm disappear because that is the way that we're going to learn and we're going to grow and most importantly we're gonna be refined so the next time the boats being rocked and you're in that scary place and you don't know what's gonna happen next don't forget Jesus Christ is with you and he's 
riding through the storm with you. The boat may be rocking. Don't forget, you're with your redeemer who is your rock. That was cheesy. Ah, oh, that was so incredibly cheesy, but true. And now for the quote of the d -d 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 day. The quote of the day is a quote that I came across on my mission that I am so thankful for because it really has changed the way that I see trials and obstacles and lessons in my life that I'm supposed to overcome. Now it's called the serenity prayer. So I don't know if it's really a quote or a prayer, quote prayer, quote, queer, <laughs> but this is what it says. It says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Now, if we all had that kind of mindset and that mentality to know that there are things in this life that we can change and that Heavenly Father will give us the power and the ability to change. But there are also things in this life that we have no control over that Heavenly Father throws at us sometimes to see, prove me now herewith. Prove me now. Can you withstand the storm? Can you rely upon the teachings that I've given you, your parents, your friends, church, prayer, those simple primary answers? Can you cleave to those things? Can you cleave to the Savior Jesus Christ and overcome them? Because in Heavenly Father's mind and eyes, if we can, He will bless us all the more and we will grow, we will be stronger, and we will know the next time that it comes that we've done it before, we can do it again. Remember that it says, courage to change the things that I can. You know, we are going to be scared. Changes are scary. Doing things that put us out of our comfort zone are scary. Newsflash, <laughs> storms are scary. I'm not going to lie. It disrupts our life. It puts us on this kind of detour that we were not ready for, but storms from above are signs of love because Heavenly Father he has so much love for us that he's not just going to let us be stagnant. He's not going to let us remain in the same place because he knows there's a better place for us to be. And he has prepared that place. Never forget that. Not only is that place ready for you, whatever your promised land may look like, but he has prepared it. It's gonna be freaking awesome because anything Heavenly Father does is freaking awesome. <laughs> As I was on my knees this morning praying, I just could not shake this feeling that I had to talk about these storms in our life. And not only that, but I was prompted to share a storm that I went through that's very personal. I don't share it with many people. Funny, because I'm pretty outgoing and I can share almost every single part of my personality because there are parts and sequels and chapters and trilogies to my personality. But when it comes to sharing those really intimate, personal, sometimes even sacred moments, it can be difficult. Um, but I felt so strongly that I needed to share this with you. And part of me was like, no, <laughs> you know, when you get those promptings and you're just like, oh no, I really don't think I want to. Well, this is one of them. And I hope, you know, in by sharing this, somebody is able to benefit from it. It will make it so much more worth it. Um, but after, upon returning home from my mission, I was making plans with what I was going to do and where I was going to go and just trying to align my life with what Heavenly Father wanted. And there were a few weeks in that time frame that just, I just was being tossed about by the sea and I had had these doubts that I had never had before after returning home from a mission where I knew the gospel was true and I could never be the same after experiencing what I did. And then on the flip side, having these doubts and this negativity and this despair, I would loneliness and despair. Some days I didn't even want to get out of bed. And I just remember praying to Heavenly Father. And I remember asking him if this is what he wanted for me, if this is this is how he wanted me to live my life and there was just so many things I'm not gonna get into all the details but there was just so much happening and it was like the the concept when it rained it poured and then I remember there was this one day that everything just fell apart like I just could not see where I was going I couldn't see where I'd been I the world just kind of stood still and I felt so empty and I didn't have motivation. And I, I remember I asked my dad to give me a priest of blessing. And in that blessing, he just told me that Heavenly Father was aware of me and he knew what I was going through. And he wanted me to go to the singles board. And 
I was like, what on earth? <laughs> Why? <laughs> First of all, I had been to the singles ward before my mission and I just was like, okay, I just want some time, right? I just, I want to, I want to have some time to be a return missionary. I don't feel like I have to jump into that quite yet. But honestly, I think the thing I struggled with the most was feeling like I was at a certain level when I was on my mission. And then when I came home, I had just like fallen down a few octaves or I don't know, but I just didn't feel the spirit as strongly. And I just was kind of at a roadblock. I was at a standstill and I didn't know what it was. And all these crazy things were happening with personal family members and just with different situations. And um, my mom told me something that really changed my life. And I know that's kind of a dramatic statement to make, but she, we were driving and I just felt like crying. Like I just wanted to cry. That's all I wanted to do was to cry. And she looked over at me and she said to me, Meg, I believe there is nothing that the atonement of Jesus Christ can't heal. And I've believed that, I've heard that, I've known that, but until that moment when I needed those words the most and my mom told me that, everything in my life just stopped. It struck my heart in a way that no other words, no other testimony in that moment could have. That night, it was also FAG <laughs> for our singles board. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go and I don't know why because seriously, I remember walking in the doors and still wanting to cry, still feeling like I was gonna cry. And then I walked in the doors and I just was like, okay, I'm here. I'm gonna try to be, you know, the person that Heavenly Father wants me to be right now, but I have no idea why I'm here and I have no idea why I came on a day that all I wanted to do was cry. <laughs> My eyes were like really puffy too because it was just, a terrible day for me terrible day well it was that day that I actually met my husband at an FHE activity and it was evidence to me that this opposition I was feeling this trial this strife was because I was going to meet my eternal companion now I didn't know at the time but I hoped that it was him and it was so amazing that this storm that for some reason, and I know people go through hard things and compared to what other people go through, it was just a, probably a small, small, small storm. But for me, the way that I was feeling in that darkness and that despair, I honestly didn't know how long it was gonna take for me to be healed from that and to come back from that. Little did I know that going to that FHA activity would bring me my husband, my eternal companion, my source of like, new beginnings and possibilities and and here we are with our baby boy that makes me emotional too because because having my son and my husband are the most important things in my life and they honestly have they've been the closest thing to heaven I've ever felt and I've ever seen and had I just let that storm overcome me and let my doubts overcome me I wouldn't be where I am today and I wouldn't I definitely wouldn't have met my husband I wouldn't be married and I wouldn't have our beautiful baby boy well, some of the people that I admire most are my grandma Benyon and my grandpa Benyon and my mom and the reason I admire them the most is because they have gone through things that I can't imagine. Truly, I can't imagine going through. And they were able to still lean upon their Savior, Jesus Christ. And they were able to find that hope and that redemption. And, and there are countless family members and friends and all of you that I'm inspired by. And I know that there's no way that we'd be able to get through these storms. We'd be able to overcome these storms in our life if it wasn't because of the Savior, Jesus Christ. I know that. And I know that these storms, they're scary. And in the moment, they're uncertain. But they're divine. They're divinely sent. 
and that we can look at them as a gift because they can be if we choose to see them that way if we choose to have the wisdom to know that we can't change the storms but we can have courage to accept where they will take us and to be guided by a more divine way I'm thankful for that storm that I had to go through, for the storms that we all have to go through that bring us to our promised land, so to speak. My promised land is my family and they're the greatest accomplishment I've ever had and they're mine. And those promised blessings are ours to be with each other eternally and forever. That's what it's all about. That's what, that's why we're here everything my husband once said to me something really profound he said you hold my hand and I'll hold your hand and together we'll reach for the Savior's hand and that's what we try to do we don't always do it perfectly but that's that's our way of lifting each other up during the hard times of life it's time to lighten up the mood a little bit this next scripture is a little bit light and happy and it talks about the power that we have to overcome these storms it's in Alma 26 6 Yea, they shall not be beaten down by the storm at the last day. Neither shall they be harrowed up by the whirlwinds. But when the storm cometh, they shall be gathered together in their place, that the storm cannot penetrate to them. Yea, neither shall they be so driven with fierce winds, whithsoever the enemy listeth to carry them. Now that is telling us that if we are prepared, we will be protected and we will be preserved. It doesn't mean the storm's not going to pass through our life. It just means we're going to be that much more ready for it. We're gonna know how to overcome it. Cleave to your savior, Jesus Christ, because he's the person that's gonna guide you through this. He's gonna help you through this life. He's gonna help you know that there are brighter days ahead. <laughs> Two people sharing a chair with my husband, Brandon. Hello, everyone. And this is our little son, Dawson. This is our little son, Dawson. Yeah. And the reason I wanted to bring Brandon as a guest star today is because, one, he's the best person in the world. Besides yourself. No, I thank you. And two, because his experience is really similar to mine. The whole FHE experience, I was telling you, I really did not want to go. I received a blessing that I was not so chipper about. and But I went anyways, and so I kind of wanted you to hear Brandon's side of things. Yeah, you're talking about the FHE mm -hmm. we met. Mm -hmm. So, just, uh, I've been going to school for a few years, and just uh, everything had started bearing down on me with all the pressure of trying to decide what to study. And the time who I was just uh, just in general trying to find a wife and also just <laughs> I eventually found her. I didn't know that was around the corner. So it was, I just got really overburdened with everything and trying to take care of everything myself. And I remember that week I was getting really sad about it actually. And little did I know that's when I would be able to meet Meg. We, we did meet each other. And when I met her, she was just spontaneous and crazy, not crazy, but lovely, and just want to talk to me. And that's exactly what I need. I need someone to talk to me because I wasn't in a talkative mood actually. Oh, baby Dawson wants to sing for you. Oh, he's very talkative. When I sing, sing, sing to YouTube. Yes. And so, okay. and Satan, he definitely knows each one of our hearts, but not just that, but things that can distract us. And if it's not a bad thing, but just me focusing on all these things about all my stresses I had and that I wasn't really progressing as far as school I was like trying to figure out where I was going to go it definitely was leading up to this moment and yeah there are times before the goodness that you have to endure through that if you do so then my father promises that he will bless us and with 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 much more than we ever asked for and he definitely has and it was just the perfect timing but that's what I needed. I love that. It's the best. <laughs> no, not the best, but pretty good. You the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but say bye, baby Dustin. Just add on to that as he was talking, something that I was thinking about is that one of Satan's tools he uses is to define our situations. And so don't let Satan define your trials and your obstacles as something that's a negative, hard, horrible thing, because sometimes it's the very thing that's going to lead you to those good things you yearn for and those righteous desires you want. So. So I hope this September, you September burst with more joy. Yoga pants, because mom life. <laughs> These are just yoga pants. They look like real pants, but they're just yoga pants.
Well, we have come to the end. Thank you again for tuning in, for your support, for your love. Please leave a comment down below of a trial or an experience that has really shaped you. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with somebody who's maybe going through a storm right now. Oh, hiccup. <laughs> I will see you guys next week.